So in this video, I'm going to talk about the MOSFET overdrive voltage. And the overdrive voltage is an incredibly useful concept, and it's also really simple, but it doesn't seem to be explicitly covered by a lot of uh, textbooks or courses. Um, so we know if we've got just our garden variety, let's say it's a, just an NMOS, it's your garden variety NMOS, we know that if we've got a certain voltage, VGS, and we know the MOSFET's threshold VT, then we can write the drain current, uh, depending on whether it's in saturation or triode, let's assume it's in saturation, as one half times mu n C ox times W over L times VGS minus VT squared. And I like to lump all these terms together into a single term called Kn, uh, one half Kn times VGS minus VT squared. That's just to make it a little easier on the eyes. Now, the overdrive voltage is this quantity here, VOV is equal to VGS minus VT. So if we rewrite this equation again, it becomes this beautifully simple and elegant equation just involving two single variables, Kn and the overdrive voltage VOV. Uh, but why is VOV useful? Um, why VOV? Also, you'll, you'll see it written sometimes as delta V and sometimes as V star. I absolutely hate this notation because that restricts using delta V for something absurdly specific and I often want to ca calculate things using changes in voltages, which I use delta V for, so I hate this notation. I'm never going to use it. But the reason why I like the overdrive voltage VOV so much is that it has a physical meaning. And in this case, the, its physical meaning is just the voltage above the threshold. So it's the voltage above the threshold voltage of the MOSFET. And it's nice because it uh, leads to really elegant equations. It's also incredibly convenient when we work with current sources. So if you've got, for example, a cascode current source, uh, and don't worry if you haven't seen this before, but you've basically got a, a current source with two bias voltage, two bias voltages, VV1 and VV2. And sometimes you'll want to have the maximum output swing or often you'll want to have the maximum output swing of your current source and so we'll say well okay um we want both these transistors to be in saturation and that means that we need to have vgs minus vt to be less than vds or more elegantly now, the overdrive voltage to be less than VDS. Or my personal favorite, the minimum of the overdrive voltage and VDS to be the overdrive voltage. So if we assume that this is the case, then we get one overdrive voltage drop across here, one overdrive voltage drop across here, and we know that the output can be at minimum twice the overdrive voltage. It's also extremely convenient if you want to relate the current, uh, the drain current of a MOSFET to a voltage. Uh, because if we move some variables over to the other side uh, and we take a square root, uh, we'll see that the overdrive voltage is just equal to 2ID divided by Kn. And it's, this is a simple relationship, it's elegant, and it's incredibly useful. Um, it's useful for designing things. So basically the overdrive voltage is completely eliminating the need to worry about the threshold voltage. So no more, no more worrying about VT. All you need to know is the current and the overdrive voltage or the current and the dimensions of the transistor. So I've showed you what, what the overdrive voltage is for an NMOS, but what about if we have a PMOS transistor? So we've got some voltage at the gate, uh, some voltage at the source, and some voltage at the drain. Well, our drain current we know is just one half times KP times VSG minus the threshold voltage. I'm just gonna put magnitude of the threshold voltage because some people still like to 
uh, like to say that the threshold voltage is negative. Um, in that case, this is the overdrive voltage. So for a PMOS, the overdrive voltage is VSG minus the magnitude of the threshold voltage. And that gives us the same exact equation, 1 half KP times VOB squared, as we had for the NMOS. So it's an incredibly elegant way of relating currents and voltages in MOSFETs. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time.